Radio. Prisma Radio. Prism Radio. The Music Air Experience. Prisma Radio. Bonjour à tous, nous sommes dans les studios de Prisme Radio avec la charmante Tara McDonald. Ah, bonjour Hi Tara, how are you Oh, I'm great, thank you. Oh, you're the queen of clubs, I know. Ah. But uh, can you explain in the few words your background Well, uh, <laughs> in a few words, I've, I've been singing all my life, more or less, since I was very, very young. Fell in love with dance music and... Um, because I used to go to clubs all the time and I started making up songs over the instrumentals and I didn't know this could be my job, you know? <laughs> and uh, cut a long story short, then I, I met a few DJs like Axwell. I, met, I wrote a song with him and it became a big hit. And uh, then with Arma Van Helden and David Guetta and, and now I'm about to make my own solo project. So it's a very exciting time. Okay, great. Uh, when was born your passion for the music? Oh... It, it was probably born with me because... Um, with your parents? Yeah, my, my dad's a massive, massive music fan. He's a real influence, actually, in my life because you can ask my dad anything about the records he loves. He knows who's the drummer. He knows uh, where, they, where they made the record, in what country, in what studio. He's, he's like a walking uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, yeah, he, he, uh, he believed in me and gave me chances because when I was like a very very young um i started singing when i was nine like working and uh, getting paid for that and working in london and i lived like two hours away and he he believed believed in me and allowed me to to follow my dreams so okay. whereas my mother didn't want me to do it <laughs> at all so uh, he fought for me and and gave me chances you know okay when you was um when you were young mm. and child uh what kind of music uh, did you listen uh When, because I grew up in a village, a really, really le, le village, très, très, très petit. <laughs> like, there's no shops. That's how small it is. If you okay. want a chocolate bar, like, I was a really skinny child because if I wanted a chocolate bar, I had to walk to the next village, which was about an hour. Oh. So two hours to walk there, get a chocolate <laughs> bar and come all the way back. So uh, I grew up in this place where, um, and we didn't have much money. So I just had my dad's record collections, which was rock and roll. Um, and country and western and some musical and classical music and then when I bought uh, with my pocket money a radio <laughs> <laughs> then I could listen to uh, what everyone else in the country was listening to and I got really into pop music but especially like there was a band uh, called the Bangles and it was all girls so I loved the fact that there were these like rock and roll girls that wrote their own songs and sang in harmony and then um, dance music came along like it was a massive revelation it took over the UK and I get I got very swept up in that as a teenager and started uh, going to clubs which uh, when I wasn't illegally allowed because I was too young and I would just pad my bra with socks and try and make myself and look older I, I just remembered my birthday <laughs> but the, the socks in the bra really helped me oh, oh my God. <laughs> they used to let me in and uh, yeah and I fell in love with the whole dance music scene Okay, and uh, when you're a, ch a teenager, yeah, uh, the pop music was very uh, interested in London. Yeah, it, you know we have a um, really cool music scene in the UK. There's a lot of bands. There's something for and everybody. Did you, did you remember the name for the band or something like that? Well, I loved Madonna. <laughs> I have to say because uh, she's someone that took underground dance music and did uh, her own pop thing with it this is how she started as a dance artist and um that and i love uh, that she's a real performer and entertainer she's not for me the the best singer but she's someone with the biggest attitude and the biggest um stage show it's your and, idol and uh, sorry it's your idol uh she's yeah i guess yeah she's like one of my idols she's uh, my main idol is freddie mercury <laughs> <laughs> Different. <laughs> completely different but they've got some things in similar where they're great entertainers and showmen um they write great songs it's a different genre of music but freddie mercury for me had it all because he, he wrote amazing songs he was great on stage he was uh very theatrical and entertaining he, he was madonna and and freddie mercury you could you could never call them boring you know okay. they're they're just one off they're artists you know <laughs> one of a kind Okay, and in France, uh, 
We know you with the Darius, Darius, yeah, uh, with David Guetta. Yeah. Uh, when did you start to write? Um, oh, the uh, lyric and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was strange because I got sent the the instrumental, um, but not from David. At this point, I, I didn't know David. We hadn't met, and it was from a guy in Germany, and he uh, called Sven. He's got a company called Yama Bookie, and he puts people together. And because I'd written with some other artists before they thought of me and I don't even know if David knew that that they sent me the tracks and uh, because he sent me stuff from Armand van Helden and also from Todd Terry and he didn't tell me uh, who the producers were so I just had to listen to the songs and for me think of what one I preferred and so I went with my heart and There was this instrumental track which had uh, really great chords and melody and uh, and I kept on hearing in my head like delirious, <laughs> delirious. <laughs> and uh, so we wrote wrote this song and uh, I wrote it in uh, January and it was freezing, freezing cold and all I wanted was a holiday. So the song is kind of about, you, you know, you're stuck, you're working, there's no time for yourself and you're saving all your money for, for that time when you're in the sun and, and just wanting to be happy and have the simple pleasures and delirious sort of is the word for when you're so happy, you can't, <laughs> you can't be any more happy. So I thought it was a nice title for, um, for a track and... And I'm so happy it did well, yeah. <laughs> and for your writing, is the exp it's the way to express your feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the tracks that have worked best for me of when I've been in um, like a happy moment. Delirious is a happy, happy track. And uh, um, especially on the dance floor, I think people want to hear something that, that uplifts them because no one goes out to a club on a Saturday night to feel depressed. <laughs> They can do that at home. <laughs> you go to escape your life. And uh, the tracks that I've written when I've been a bit more melancholy, more sad, or I've had something in my life that's been really, you know, shitty, and I, and I express that through the songs, they've been less successful because <laughs> no one wants to hear that on a Saturday night, you know. <laughs> So now I'm, you know, it's good to give out positive energy. Okay. Positive, positive. <laughs> <laughs> And for you, what's the best definition for the good track of dance music now? Now? Oh. Um, Because I think when you when start, it's totally different from now to now. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is kind of different. But it's it's gone through, I think dance music has gone through a lot of different stages. Like I first sort of came on the scene um kind of 2005 and and it was very much um there was tracks like Lola's theme then and um everybody run everybody roll like, uh, with Martin Solveig like that was my favorite ever Martin Solveig record um it was very song based and then minimal came in and a lot of tracks with vocals samples but it was better for for people to rap to not really for singers. So I didn't make so many records during this time because the, the fashion of the music became um, without too many chords. And if you're a singer, you know, I can't just make a, a song over something that just goes dunk, 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 dunk for eight minutes. You know, <laughs> it's impossible for me to make something interesting. It's better for a rapper. And now it's exciting because the fashion again has moved towards song. Like with David Guetta and Sia, she's a real songwriter. Yeah. So uh, it's it's very much song and very urban now as well. But I think now dance music has become so popular that um, all the people that have loved it for so long now, the rest of the world is discovering dance music. So it, it's it's on radio everywhere. You can't escape dance music now, and uh, which is that's great, you know, because it, it wasn't like that a few years ago yeah. and it's changed very quickly and I think David Guetta has a lot to do with that yeah because sure. he, yeah he's opened the scene out and working with a lot of these massive pop artists have just made everyone more excited about dance music yeah because now with David Guetta we can move pop music and electronic music yeah and so many people now are copying what we've all been doing for years <laughs> which uh, is really flattering yeah you know I know yeah and um You already work with many DJ and producers. Yeah. And for you, who did you get the best feeling? Oh, um, yeah, it's strange because uh, so many people live in all different countries around the world. Yeah. And dance music is all like 
you can make a track in, you know, Russia and it will be played in France. So um, like when I worked with Armin van Helden, we didn't meet each other. And, and acts were the same because he was in Sweden. I'm in London. Uh, Armin van Helden's in New, New York. York. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you send things through the internet. And it's really nice uh, when you do a writing session with someone and you're actually in the same room. Because wow. for me, it's it's the human contact, you know, and, and you bounce off each other with the energy. And um, so for that reason, I really enjoyed working with Sydney Sampson because um, we were together in the same room and, and we did a track called Dynamite last year. And, so uh, with Armin, with Armin van Enden, uh, we didn't meet... I didn't meet him. Yeah, this is crazy. I, I, uh, we sent the vocal from London and uh, we heard uh, through the record company, yeah, he likes it <laughs> because they released it. So that was it. And then uh, about three years later, we, we were doing a big arena uh, gig in Germany together. Uh, and uh, oh, I think it's really strange. Yeah, but it, sometimes it goes like that, you know, and... Uh, Someone said, oh, yeah, Armand's at your hotel. And I said, oh, really? I haven't <laughs> met him yet. So we, we travelled together in the car and we caught up. Oh. And then when I go to New York, I, I see him and uh, he's, he's a really, really cool guy. But it's just, you know, everyone is really, really busy. And on tour, you've seen the schedules. You know, if you look at a, a DJ or a, like myself, a singer's schedule and the countries, you're in three or four countries a week. It's um, it's really, really crazy, especially in the summer. So to try and find a day and to link up <laughs> when you've got other studio commitments and things, it's it's tricky. So, <laughs> yeah, so we never met <laughs> until three years later. And then I had to sing in front of him. And I thought, oh, God, I, you know, this is pressure now. But, but he was so cool. And uh, luckily, he, he loved my performance as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so that was good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And yeah. tonight you're playing uh, at the Loft. At Loft? Yeah. To promote your first singles? Uh, I'm not going to perform that tonight, actually. Tonight I'm going to be performing um, some things that people hopefully know and love. <laughs> um, and then I have like a special bootleg. Uh, I have a mix of my tracks because sometimes when you're a singer, you have to... Um, really think about how you're going to present your show at a club, especially somewhere like The Loft that has lots of, you know, all the massive DJs perform there. And so to keep it really dance, I, I want there not to be too many stops and to, to mix things in quite cleverly and to have a few surprises. So I'm hoping that um, people tonight are just going to go absolutely mental because I will be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I have some bootlegs in there and uh, it's so it's really fresh and cutting okay. edge. And yeah. how long will you stay in, on the stage? About 30 minutes. And then afterwards, I'll probably be in the crowd for the rest of the <laughs> crowd surfing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in a uh, in few days, um, we have the first single for the first own album. Yes, um, we're basically, I have to master everything yet. And so I'm, I'm running back to London on Sunday because I have a lot of uh, studio things to do because I've never released my my own single before. So it's um, I've had all these amazing experiences with other people and it's taught me so much, okay. really. So I'm hoping that I've learned enough now to do the best job ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a song, I think it's really special. It's really funny. Uh, it's called Give Me More. It's, it's like tongue in cheek, like um, it's dance, it's pop, it's uh, silly and crazy and uh, it's got really good energy. Okay. So this is going to be the starting point and, uh, and we're going to release it in February. So wow. yeah, it's, oh, it's so close. <laughs> it's so close. And I, I never realized before because I'd been a featured artist or a versus artist, there's so much that you have to do. Like... Um, what artwork do I want on the single? Make sure I credit everybody properly, uh, legal things. And uh, oh my gosh, there's a lot of work to do, but it's really, really exciting. But what, uh, what's your inspiration for to create this album? I wanted to do something that's really fun. That's okay. the main thing because um, life can be too difficult at times. And I think with music, you just want to escape. It's an art form. It's something to set yourself free and release yourself especially with dance music you know it's uh, uh i love the the genre so much because it does 
in dance music, we don't care if you've got money, if you haven't got money, if you're old, if you're young, if you're black, if you're white, you know, everyone, it's, this music is for everybody to get involved and it's a community. And this is what I want to do with my project. It's about the one love and it's, it's fun. And uh, it's just about having a good time and sharing a good feeling. And on this album, you're alone or you, you, you have the guests with you? That I won't reveal right now, but I will have some guests, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. The great guest? <laughs> the new guest? The new, the new artist or the great artist? Oh, you'll have to wait and see. Uh -huh. You have to go to www.tarramcdonald.tv <laughs> <laughs> and it all will be revealed. Yeah. <laughs> but why did you wait so long time to create or to produce this album? Uh, good, very good question. <laughs> uh, the music industry is not easy and you have to fight, fight, fight all the time. And um, it's all about timing. You know, I, I signed a deal before with uh, another label and it was the wrong deal. And being so happy to finally have the solo deal and then two years of legal to get out of the deal. So now I'm, I'm out and I'm free and I'm about to sign for the second uh The second time for my project that we have a lot of people that want to sign it so i just have to pick the right label and this is like pr probably people don't realize like you can um it's, it's a person relationship you know it's about people and so if the people behind you uh, are signing you for the wrong reason or you get a, a, a bad deal and you don't understand the legal side then you're, you're stuck and then it, it's a nightmare for your project there's there's so many things that that make a hit record and you just have to make sure that you've got the best uh team ever with you you know and i'm i'm confident with the people that i'm working with now uh, i've made a lot of mistakes in the past <laughs> and um and it's tricky because i don't come from a musical family like my dad was a van driver and my mum worked as a secretary so everything i've done has been on my own and learning and making mistakes okay. and uh hopefully now i've made all the mistakes possible to uh now have the success that <laughs> i deserve <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's been a long time coming <laughs> and your parents help you for this new album uh they don't really get i mean my mum, she's always like you have this beautiful voice why aren't you celine <laughs> dion and i'm like well, i would kill myself if i'm celine dion because I, although i respect what celine dion does as an artist I, it's just not me and uh, you just you know you have to uh, go with your own thing and my dad is just kind of like I think they're just happy that that I'm working you know and I'm not living in a uh, like the grotty horrible apartment I lived in when I was 21 when I first moved to London you know and I lived in a shower room <laughs> like it was just me in a shower the bed was part of the shower it was horrible I think they're just glad you know that I've got a roof over my head and I'm, I'm able to feed myself and that <laughs> they have very low expectations <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah oh my god but they're supportive that's the main thing I'm, okay. I'm really really lucky you know they're they're there for me all okay. the time yeah wow yeah and what makes you different from the other singers uh whew. <laughs> whew. uh everyone is individual i guess so um I'm just me mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know what makes me different. I, I just, I write what I feel and um, I try and be a really honest person mm -hmm. and I'm learning to uh, be a better person every day, <laughs> I think, because I analyze everything and um, I just want to give as much as I can to my fans and to the people that love this type of music. I just want to give everything 100% and like I will do tonight. Okay. Every little bead of sweat, everything will be 100% and um, just to make people have a good time and enjoy. And I just want to share what I'm doing with everyone. And you're close to your fans? Yeah, we message yeah. each other a lot. Like Twitter is amazing for that. Yeah, um, it's the best way, I think. Yeah, because it's really personal and... I, I physically, I can't message everybody, but I do always try mm. like, because it's impossible for me to do an interview and to be on Twitter, you know, but, but I always try and message people and, uh, you prefer Twitter to Facebook? I use Facebook. Uh, Twitter is easier when I'm on the go, you know, but then if I have like an hour, then I'll reply to messages, you know, on Facebook and, uh, my spare time is sort of doing that when I'm not doing music. Um, 
and and sometimes it's hard like I've had a few people oh I sent you a message like a month ago and you haven't replied but if I physically replied to everything then that's all I would do and there would be no new music mm. um because you you know and you have to the main thing is that I make music and that's how I want to reach people but I love to keep in touch because yeah. I really appreciate people's support like I get such um lovely messages and it and it just warms my heart and it's a, another reason to inspire me to make music because it's like oh people get this they wow. they know how i feel you know there's there's people like me out there that understand exactly wow. how i feel about music and uh, we connect on this level and it's <laughs> really really special actually because i never you know when i first started making music i didn't think that there's going to be this guy sitting in his bedroom in cairo like going ah oh, this track is just amazing you you've you've um, uplifted my day when i'm sad i play your music it makes me happy like i'm like sitting oh. at home and crying like <laughs> oh that's beautiful you know and it's such and it's easy for me to make mm. this music and uh, i have to follow my heart and my <laughs> dreams and continue you know great yeah otherwise you have the another activity You're the coach for the big show. Oh yes. Um in yeah. Belgium? Yeah, don't Belgic. Oui. <laughs> yeah, Le Voice. Um and I'm yeah, there's four coaches I'm assisting. I'm the assistant coach with uh, Conta Moziman, mm -hmm. who is of course is uh, a Swiss French uh, <laughs> singer, songwriter, very very talented. He, I call him my uh, my little French brother now because uh, we met a couple of years ago in Paris at a party and uh, I didn't know he was famous because you know every country you have different stars and um he's just a really lovely person to start with and and really really talented and he asked me to to assist him because he's very young yeah. and uh the other judges are a lot older you know they're like in their 50s and uh every every judge has a as an assistant coach and I'm there to Uh, make decisions with him and just to make his because it's a lot of pressure to, for this kind of job but actually I said to him because I think he's the best coach because he did a show similar you know the Star Academy Star and Academy that's how he yeah. he started and uh, so he knows exactly he how everyone feels yes he yeah he won and uh, and and I saw his audition and <laughs> I can see why he won you know He's got such great energy and it's great to be working beside him and we're doing a record together as well called All Alone which is out on Universal. So we met uh in Paris then he asked me to do a, a collaboration record and it was my first ever duet. I've never sang a duet with someone before so it's really interesting for me to do something new. Yeah. And and then uh he said uh do you want to come and do this thing called The Voice and I was like oh my god I, I don't know because <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a scary prospect. Um But I'm really enjoying it. I was really nervous before because it's a lot of responsibility yeah. because you have all these new artists and they're all very, very talented, mm. but they're at different stages of development. Like you have someone of 16 that has a great voice, but doesn't know how to be on stage or doesn't know how to move. Mm. And so they look, they don't look natural when they sing because when you see someone perform, If they look really nervous, you don't relax as the audience, okay. you know? You just want to believe in someone and enjoy. And uh, so there's so much to teach them. And some of them aren't ready yet, but they have talent. And so for us, it's to, to let them know if they don't win the competition, because only one person wins yeah. and every coach has 14 contestants. Wow. So it's a lot, a lot of talent. And... Um, My main thing is just say, don't be depressed because music is very, very difficult. Everyone, you know, so many people want to do music and uh, they've got this fantastic opportunity and they have to think about the life after the show um, and to get as much out of it as possible because I never had uh, someone when I'm singing to say to me, oh, you know what, you look a bit strange when you do that or when you sing this note, it's better if you change your mouth shape because you'll get a better tone. You know, I... I had to do uh learn from all the years of just making mistakes on stage and and perfecting my craft and so they're in a great opportunity because they have people with years of experience we're watching them and critiquing them like but in a really positive way and so they 
they're all now going to be that much stronger as artists. So I, I, I can't stop talking about it. I'm, it's really exciting. You know, I didn't know I would love it this much. Okay, and yeah. the perform the 14 performers. Yeah, uh, know you before? Some, yeah, some do, <laughs> um, because I had a, a song in Belgian, uh, in Belgique, dans Belgique, <laughs> uh, last year. Um, or, or was it? 2010 so yeah like two years ago yeah almost two years ago and uh, for Tomorrowland and that was oh, yeah. um, like a big a big hit there and then with Delirious um, and, and some of the other records that I've done have done quite well in Belgium because um, it's weird you make a, a track and it can be a hit in one country and do nothing in another country and suddenly you're touring in Canada every day and you and perform at, at Tomorrowland Yeah, yeah, I did two performances on the main wow. stage. Yeah, Amazing. I was like a sandwich uh, between the Swedish house mafia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, was, I was very happy to be that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, they were like in the middle. I did something before and something after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> they left by helicopter, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, uh, the US government uh, closed mega uploads ah you don't you didn't know yeah I, I, well i've been i haven't been uh is this for to stop people from downloading yeah tracks illegally and uh what's your reaction about this close um lots of different reactions for me as a as a singer i uh pay for my life by uh singing live that's the thing i don't almost expect to earn from the writing that I do even but music is is an art and it's made for sharing and because of the internet and all these things um but it's, it's become is free illegal -ish, like illegal -ish, yeah it's illegal sharing I mean I think it's just re very very difficult to stop like when you have a country like Russia for example they never pay for music they never really have as soon as an album comes out they copy it and they sell it illegally on the street and it's always been that way in Russia you know and and the same in Brazil and people don't have money but they want to still enjoy music and and they should be able to um but for friends of mine that are amazing songwriters and live only by songwriting but now can't afford to live because they they don't have money like if they were a builder and they built a house they would be paid for building the house now if you're just a songwriter and you write for example uh, when love takes over or something but you still can't afford to feed yourself then it's really sad so um because i i can sing uh, no one can illegally download a live experience that yeah. so if so a lot of people i know that are songwriters um now have so many other jobs as a just they can't live just from being a songwriter even if maybe they have a, a, a top 10 track or two top 10 tracks a year they can't actually live so in that way it, it the music industry has become so different and it's so difficult and you i think a lot of people that i've met are not now doing music because they they simply can't afford to to pay their rent and and it becomes very sad for them because music is a 24 hour job like sometimes i do 22 hour day 24 hour day and i do it because i love it and i and i see a progression in my life but if you were someone that made music say in the 90s and you made a number one like if you had a number one record even just in the uk you would be able to live for like two three years But and you only ever get number one records are really hard yeah, to make. Yeah. It, it could be the only one you get in your life. You know, this this inspiration, this magic, it doesn't happen every day. It's a really special thing. And these people now aren't protected. And that I, I feel, you know, obviously very sad about because I, it's happening to people around me and they're working in bars and restaurants and, and they're, they're really talented. So... That's what I think about that. <laughs> But, you know, I've downloaded things and I, I think it's impossible to stop. Yeah. Really, because, you know, you see the file sharing everywhere. Yeah, illegal website about that. Yeah, and, and we're all saying now, you know, music is almost free. Mm. But it, it's it, it's good in some ways and in other ways it's really hard. For, for record companies, for example, so many are going bust and they haven't got money to develop artists and... Uh, 
now uh, if if someone that's listening wants to make music themselves the best way you have to just do everything yourself pay for everything yourself invest like me i've i'm investing my life savings like in me in what i want to do in my life and uh, don't go on holiday like spend that money on on your art do what you believe in and and build something yourself and become like almost a business person for yourself as well as an artist i think it's really important okay for the future producers <laughs> and the singers out there <laughs> did you think before to to give a free download of your tracks for your friends to um to your fans for example yeah that's something i want to do and i've done like some bootlegs and stuff i just need to make sure that um because i'm using like some of my own tracks <laughs> i don't want like the record company i've signed it to to hate me <laughs> or to give me like some uh, lawyer action you okay. know so i just need to make sure but i have i have things that i want to give uh I actually want to do much more of giving like even some of my costumes and stuff I don't wear anymore because uh, once I wear something a few times I can't really wear it all the time. So uh, there's lots of things I want to do as like giveaways for for fans and music lovers and and a lot of people are doing giving music away because you you just it's I just think it's impossible to stop with the yeah. file sharing. I don't see how they tried it before when Napster first started and the, and they they tried to stop Yeah. the downloads with you know LimeWire and all of these uh, illegal sites but it hasn't stopped yeah we can you know yeah you can still do it I, I personally do buy I prefer physical products yeah me too I love it but like I'm a, a vinyl or something like that yeah wow. I'm a geek we're both geeks <laughs> <laughs> we should have on the glasses with the with the plaster in the middle oh no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're music geeks but yeah. I love like even when I was a little girl If a new album came out, it was so exciting and mm. I wanted to read the lyric. And yeah. that's probably because now I, I write lyrics. But when I was a kid, I didn't, <laughs> I, you know, I don't think I wrote very good lyrics when I was probably eight. But if a pop album or whoever, I wanted to see what what the story was in the song, because like poetry. So I, I still have to have that now. You know, I don't like something going to my phone. <laughs> I don't want to hear a single on my phone. I want to hear it when I'm at home and uh, relaxed or jumping around with a glass of wine. Or, you know, <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Tara. And Thank see you, you tonight at Loft. Yeah, see you tonight at Loft. And remember, give me more. It's out in February. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spending my life savings on this record. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Prisma Radio. Prisma Radio. Prisma Radio.